So I was driving down I-15, when all of a sudden this jerk pulled in front of me going 70 miles per hour. Bear in mind, this was the fast lane, and this turkey had the audacity to be going the speed limit. The speed limit! What was he trying to do, make the rest of us late for work? So I did my civil duty and said, this guy thinks he owns the road! Having said that, I felt much better about myself because, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, everybody does it. When I glanced at the lady in the next lane over, I could tell that she agreed that this guy thought he owned the road. The turkey. In fact, judging by the subtle movement of her lips, I'm pretty sure she called him a turkey too. There's a lot of turkeys out there. It's sad but true. And it's our responsibility to stand up to them by calling them turkeys. I mean, what if nobody called the guy who cuts you off on the highway a turkey? How else would we know that he's a turkey? It's a tradition that's lovingly passed on between generations. Of course, we don't actually do anything about bad drivers. I mean, that, that's the responsibility of the gods, the highway gods. Our solemn responsibility is to complain. However, one day something happened that shook my faith. It was rush hour. The lanes were packed and I got caught behind this, this grandma, the grandma of grandmas. And she was driving this pink 77 Cadillac and she couldn't have been going over 20 miles per hour. So I called her a tire licking goat, which made me feel marginally better. However, as the miles rolled by and still I was caught behind her, I started to wonder if the highway gods were even listening. As if that wasn't disturbing enough. When I happened to glance in the rearview mirror, there was no mistaking the word rolling off the lips of the guy behind me. Turkey. I'm not the turkey, I cried. The grandma is. It's not what you think. But he just did it again. Turkey. I was so disturbed, I couldn't focus on the road, and I, I sort of rear-ended the grandma, which resulted in a five-car pileup, and I spent the next six months in the hospital. This gave me a lot of time to think, and I couldn't help but wonder if there was some sort of karma in all this. Karma with a C. Not to be confused with the ancient Hindu belief of divine retribution, no. We're talking about automotive retribution. The idea that the way we treat each other on the highway, even when no one else is listening, may have profound consequence. As soon as I got out of the hospital, I was eager to put this theory to the test. So when these teenagers, a guy and a girl, crossed the double white line and pulled right in front of me, I said, they must be in love. And when this guy kept swerving between lanes and knocked over some construction cones, I said, he must be high on life. And the funny thing is, there was no traffic that day. And when I got off the freeway, every light was green. Karma. Of course, my transformation didn't happen overnight, and I regret that there may have been a few lapses, like the time the guy in front of me stopped at a yellow light. Jerk! I cried. That was when my transmission gave out and one of my tires rolled off. But eventually, I got it. When I pulled into the parking lot at work and somebody had taken up two spaces, I said, yes, now I can park farther away and burn more calories. And when I got pulled over for a speeding ticket, I looked at the officer and said, thank you, my friend. This citation has taught me a valuable lesson. You see, it's not about where we're going, but how we get there. Whenever I drive, I always let people pass in front of me, and sometimes I even signal. And when you get a boot on your car, it's because you're a sinner. After all, the purpose of the highway is to warm one another through love and greenhouse gas. Then one day, I was put to the ultimate test. I was in the fast lane going 190, when I felt something I'd never felt before, a pang of conscience. Apparently I'd achieved some state of automotive sainthood because I felt this overwhelming desire to be a good example for my fellow men. So I slowed down and started going 70. But as soon as I did so, the honking, headlight flashing, and bird flipping began. Behind me was none other than the guy who had falsely accused me of being a turkey. But maybe he was right about me. It was a lonely road, the path of the turkey. 
fraught with misunderstanding and persecution, we turkeys did what we must for the greater good. This thought was so transcendent. I had an out-of-body experience, which was a really bad idea while driving. The next thing I knew, I smashed into a semi-truck and the guy behind me crashed into me. That was 34 years ago in my past life. Of course, in the meantime, the great wheel of karma continued to turn, and I came back. And as you can see, judging by the handsomeness and celebrity status of my new incarnation, the highway god smiled favorably upon me. As for that other guy who died in that crash, well, I happened to see him just the other day. I was driving near a farm by Spanish Fork when there he was. There was no mistaking that ornery look in his eyes. And I have to say, the beak suited him nicely. <laughs>